you know, there really are only four purposes for the money that you have in retirement and that drive your decision-making regarding your income decisions and your asset decisions. Income decisions would be things like social security or pension. Asset decisions would be, where do I put the money that I have in all of my accounts, my checking accounts, my savings accounts, my investment accounts. Ultimately, there's only four purposes that you have. And so proper retirement planning, effective retirement planning is determining the right amount to put in each of the four buckets to accomplish all of the goals that matter most to you. We have liquidity in our first column, then we have income, third is growth, and then finally we have protection. We call these tools for a reason in the sense that they accomplish a, a, a unique purpose and in the sense that tools generally have kind of a singular purpose or focus uh, that you use them for. So in other words, I use a screwdriver for a particular purpose. I use a hammer for a particular purpose. I use a saw for a particular purpose. And I don't begrudge the fact that the screwdriver can't saw something in half. I don't begrudge the fact that a hammer can't put a screw in. Uh, each is unique. Each has the positives and the trade-offs. And it's the same way with financial tools. Let's talk a little bit about the goal of each of the tools, what the positives are, what, what I give up when I put money into this bucket, and some of the tensions that I feel in terms of determining how much is enough to put in to each of the columns or each of the buckets. Let's start with liquidity. The purpose of liquidity is to cover emergencies that may come up or short-term goals that you have in mind and to do it in a way that you have money that's available without having any penalty or potential loss to get at that money. But I do give up something when I put money into the liquidity bucket and that's the future growth of that money. I may get some interest, maybe a little bit of interest, but ultimately it's not going to grow significantly. And so I'll feel a little bit of attention when I'm determining exactly how much to put into the liquidity column. On the left-hand side, we have the, the pure availability of the money. And then on the right-hand side, we have the growth of the money. And so the more available it is, the less it's going to grow. As I get more toward higher growth options, I begin to lose a little bit of availability, kind of like CDs, for example. They might provide me more in interest, but they're going to limit my availability. So I feel a little bit of attention there in terms of where to put the funds. And then there's also a tension of putting too much money in liquidity all the way over to putting too little amount of money there. That's where uh, I can incur debt if I don't have enough money. Although if I have too much in the liquidity column, there's a little bit of an opportunity cost that that money probably could be doing a better job somewhere else. So liquidity, there's challenges in determining, determining how much is enough to put in. And ultimately, my goal is to get the right amount in liquidity, have it fully available without any penalties or loss to get at it, and to have the right amount so that I'm not uh, experiencing an opportunity cost of where that money could be better used somewhere else. The next tool is income or covering my income gap might be another way to put it. The goal in retirement is Let's cover our predictable retirement expenses with predictable income or even guaranteed income. So when you think about maximizing Social Security or choosing the right pension option, if that's available to you, that is in the income column. But then if Social Security isn't enough to cover all of the expenses, we want to cover the gap with predictable income or guaranteed income. If we're able to cover those income needs all throughout retirement, that's going to allow us to feel much more at peace and much more relaxed without having to worry about what's going on in the markets. But what, I, what do I give up when I commit one of my dollars to purchasing income or purchasing uh, predictable income? Well, the three items that I could lose could be the liquidity or the availability of the funds, the flexibility 
in particular tax planning opportunities, flexibility, and also the growth of the income over the years. So I've got to determine how much is enough to put in the bucket, realizing what I may be giving up for each dollar that I put into the bucket. So the tension here is the total amount of income coverage that I could get balanced with the ability to uh, choose to lose some level of liquidity or flexibility or growth on the funds that create income or purchase income to cover my gap. Third, we have growth. Now growth, we still need in retirement because our income needs will grow over time with inflation. So we've got to deal with the reality of inflation. And also, some want to be able to pass on uh, a large amount of funds or a certain amount of funds to the next generation or to charity. And so uh, sometimes the growth column can fund those legacy goals. If you put the right amount in the growth bucket, you'll be able to meet the growing income needs that you have all throughout retirement due to inflation. But the growth column is tricky because I may give up certain amounts of protection or certainty when I put money into growth vehicles. They have the potential to lose money. Now, I can still grow money safely. I can still have what's called protected growth, but protected growth will only have moderate rates of growth, and I will lose some liquidity or availability of the funds if I choose the route of protected growth. So a lot of individuals will divide their money up between maximum growth and protected growth. The tension of determining how much is enough to put into the growth category will be the growth potential that I may get versus how much protection I desire or how much certainty desire or in the protected growth column, how much liquidity I desire. And then finally, the fourth tool is what we call protection. And in this sense, I think of protection as the pure risk, not market risk, but the pure risk of things that could completely wipe us out, financial losses such as premature death of a spouse or health care costs that we weren't anticipating, long-term care, things of that nature. If I put the right amount in the protection column, I'm going to have adequate protection from these financial losses. But every dollar that I put toward protection is an opportunity cost. I could have used it somewhere else, maybe growth, maybe income, maybe liquidity. And so that tension is, how much coverage do I want or do I need to cover me from these big losses that could derail me with the lost opportunity cost of those dollars being potentially needed or used somewhere else?